The Rich Brooks Show on the Oregon Sports Network. Hi, everybody. I'm Todd McKim along with the coach. Welcome to this week's show. We also like to welcome our studio audience that turned out this afternoon to uh, watch today's taping. We'll go back and review the UCLA game, look ahead to next week's contest with Oregon State, and have a couple of special features for you as well. You know, Coach, uh, you and I both look at the tapes and the films of this game a couple of times before we come in to do the show. And you know, sometimes it's uh, in a game like this, it's almost more agonizing to watch the tapes afterwards than it is to actually be in the game itself. Yesterday, I think you'd probably agree that uh, the game should never have come down to a field goal attempt by Tommy Thompson or Le Perez's field goal to win. And you probably thought you had a chance to put that game away a little bit earlier and it wouldn't have come down to those two kicks. Well, I don't think there's any question about that. We had. Uh good field position in the first half uh, and ended up attempting three legal field goals and one that didn't get off just before the uh, the half uh, made two of those but certainly if we'd have made a play or two we had a couple of passes that were just a a little too high off the fingertips uh, Burwell over the middle one down deep that uh, might have been a touchdown or certainly would have given us the first down uh, and then uh, when UCLA makes it 6-6 we get first and goal on the five yard line um, and I think if our back follows on the second down play, the, uh, the fullback, I think we're going to get a touchdown on that, but he broke it back inside. Oregon won the toss of the coin, elected to defer until the second half, and so as we pick up action, Oregon kicking off, and the Bruins will receive the opening kickoff. They actually don't receive it in that Tommy Thompson kicks it through the end zone for a touchback. So the Bruins did not start any of their possessions all game long outside of their own territory and they start deep at the 20. Nice job uh, by Ernest Jones coming off the corner on this a little draw play and he gets there before Alexander can get to the line of scrimmage and makes a tackle for a two yard loss. Second and 12 at the 18. Little quick pass out here we miss a tackle but Joe Farwell is there as he's been uh, for four years to make the tackle. Third down play to keep it on the ground the loss of one. Did a good job uh, not getting too cute. I think there's a little bit of a hold there on Cummings who got tackled, but uh, we still make the play. Uh, Ernest Jones again. So you get it back. First offensive possession. This is a third down play, and kind of how things went all day. Uh, incomplete and in the hand, out of the hands of Vince Ferry, and so Tommy's got to punt it away. Great field position wasted here. Uh, get a first down or two. We're in field goal range. Can't do much with it. Uh, we do down this punt on about the five yard line. Now we uh, trade possessions. This is actually two possessions later for UCLA, a second down play in 10. Chad Cota comes in and gets the set. Chad Cota coming off uh, kind of like a peel dog. He sees his man block. Uh, you can see Ernest getting knocked down there. Here comes Chad Cota up on Walker. And I believe this might be Walker's last uh, series. It was. This is third and 25. And Romeo Bannison gets the tackle for a loss. On the draw play, Romeo Bannison makes a good move, arm over, comes in and gets Kevin Williams in the backfield. If we'd have done that uh, in the fourth quarter, we might have won the football game. So the Ducks get it back with six minutes to play in the first quarter. Ricky Whittle in at tailback, gains three here. Good drive for you as you, uh, nothing spectacular as far as big plays, but uh, three, four, five, six yards a pop. Getting a little bit of running room. Ricky Whittle picks up the first down. Here comes the only completion of the drive, as, uh, or I should say, a first down run. O'Neill out of the pocket and dives to the sticks and gets the first down. A little play action fake here. Uh, nobody open downfield. Uh, UCLA did an excellent job of covering our receivers all day long. They have talent in the secondary, good speed and size. O'Neill elects to pull the ball down and run it here before he gets knocked out of bounds. Ball now with the UCLA 38. Trap play to Juan Shedrick, picks up five. Third down and five. Hit this out a little wide. Uh, this was supposed to go inside, and uh, we have to settle for a field goal. But Doug Musgrave does a good job handling a high snap, and Tommy drilled that right down the middle very high. 47-yard field goal. The Ducks lead it 3-0. Here come the Bruins back. Once again, it's Alexander, and he cannot get to the corner on a third and two play. Chad Cota 
gets help from Herman O'Berry, but watch Coda come up, number seven, from his safety position, knocking Alexander out of bounds. So at the end of the first quarter, Oregon leading UCLA three to nothing. We are ready for the second quarter. UCLA had the ball to start the period, but was unable to move it as we pick up action. Oregon has the ball back. O'Neill out on the flat to Ronnie Harris, a gain of eight. Good drive for you here, Coach. I mean, uh, again, uh, making plays, converting a couple of uh, second and uh, long situations. Well, this is a big play right here. We've worked on it all week. Uh, Fake the reverse. We had Harris deep by about a step and a half, and Danny overthrew him. And we come back on third and two, and Burwell picks up the first down. Come back on the pitch, and a nice hard run by Burwell before being tackled by Henderson. Second down and three. Get the first down. So it's first and 10 at the 36. Out pattern to Harris. Gains eight. Second and two from the 28. Burwell again. And he picks up the first down. This is a second and eight play here. O'Neill hits a Tate in the crease there. Nice catch by Willie Tate here. It's a quick pass. Looking out wide, but Willie just sets up between the safety and the linebacker, and O'Neill delivers it, pick up the first down. Now you've got the ball at the 11. This is a critical uh, series right in here. This is actually the third down play. We don't get to the, uh, the block on the screen pass, and Gray comes up and makes the tackle, and now we have to settle for a field goal. We had a second down play that also on a pass play there that went off of Burwell's fingertips up high that if we throw it a little better or make a great catch, uh, might have been a touchdown. So leading six to nothing, UCLA comes back. Stokes at six foot four. He's a good looking young receiver. He certainly is. Uh, nice pass there by Barnes over the shoulder. Comes right back, hits Stokes again. And Stokes is very strong, as you can see here. And pulls uh, Alex Molden for an extra 10 yards. So this is really the first time UCLA has been in Oregon territory in the game. Good job by Romeo Bannis and played a heck of a football game uh, inside. Made a lot of big plays for us. Second down play, Alexander slips, loses two. So it's third down and six. A little razzle dazzle, one of the alumni plays. And I don't know how long that one will stay in the playbook. You know, Washington there. dumped it. <laughs> so fourth down and six. UCLA tries to attempt a field goal from 38 yards. It's snuffed by Bandison. Now watch what happens here. Scramble for the loose ball. It's still loose. And at this point, I don't know if anybody was really down, Coach. Maybe you can explain a little bit when we see the replay. But that is the play of the day, the blocked field goal attempt. Well, we have uh, a middle block on, which we've practiced a lot of the year. We did substitute uh, uh, Tony Coker in here because he's got a little better height than he can jump. But the guy who actually makes the play is Romeo Bannison at the nose. He makes a good swim move. And he's been busted through on three or four other occasions this year and came up empty-handed. But he broke through. We run the two linebackers up and jump them. And uh, later on, we'll see that uh, Coker on the jump gets the extra point block. But uh, we get good pressure up the middle by Bandison, and he blocks the kick. The unfortunate thing here, Todd, is that it, he, he blocks it. It went right back into the kicker's chest and came back forward. Had it gone past the kicker either way, it obviously would have been a big play and probably a touchdown for us. Farwell tried to scoop it up coming from this side, could not get a handle on it, and uh, the ensuing pile and everything, and uh, there was an ejection of a UCLA player, which I don't see on, on the film. But you can see the, the ball hits the kicker right in the shoulder, bounces off the side, but we don't get the handle on it. If we were able to, I think we'd have had at least a long gain, a possible touchdown. Uh, the ball still being trying to be picked up underneath the pile. I believe they've blown the play dead now. Somebody comes out of there with it. Herman O'Berry came out. I think Rick Daly, their starting tight end, tackled him. And I, you know, as a result, something happened on the sideline that I did not see either. Daly was ejected, and uh, you got the 15 extra yards. Yeah, there's Kristen McLemore coming around on the, uh, the counter. He's got to hit it up in there a little crisper. O'Neill scrambles and gets sacked. So great field position. Uh, unfortunately, unable to put any points on the board. So on fourth and eight, Thompson into punt. Real disappointing that we couldn't at least get into field goal range on that drive. 
Good job uh, covering this punt. You can see we're not standing in the end zone on that one, uh, <laughs> but we, uh, we do later. And then again with pretty good field position after getting it back on the punt at the 47. Sack, loss of 12. O'Neill uh, does a nice job not fumbling that football. Uh, get blindsided. Trap play to Ricky Whittle. So you get back the lost yardage on the sack. Third down and 11, but here comes uh, Donnie Edwards again from the backside. Danny can't get rid of it in time, and a loss of 13. Yeah, we need to throw that football away. Uh, Danny's still uh, trying to make the big play and doesn't want to throw an interception, but he can surely throw it over somebody's head out of bounds. Last couple of plays of the half. Uh, you run here, get a first down, clock uh, gets stopped with the timeout. Good trap play here. Burwell takes it up the middle. Uh, get it up uh, out of our deep of our territory and, uh, and then we decide that uh, maybe we can get something going. Uh, unfortunate thing is uh, we don't have a lot of timeouts left. But uh, O'Neill finds Willie Tate who makes a great catch down the middle. There's only one second left on the clock. We run out there, get our field goal team lined up. You can see the replay here on a nice catch by Willie Tate up amongst two Bruin defenders. Comes down with a football. Uh, we actually have an opportunity to get the kick off, but we don't snap the ball quite soon enough. It's as we pick up action, Oregon will receive the football to start the quarter, but UCLA will get it back quickly. That's a big play there. Terrell Edwards gets the sack on Barnes. He tries to club the ball. You'll see him come down with his right hand and actually try to strip the ball out, but Barnes does a good job protecting it. Well, you can't see from that angle. You see him trying to rip it out there. Uh, but Barnes was able to hang on to the ball. So Oregon gets it back. This is a third and 11 play. Burwell gets 12, tack on five more for a face mask. Nice run here on the draw play. Actually hits it back away from where it's designed to go because UCLA pursued to the, to the point of attack and Burwell broke it back the other side. Uh, get a five yard face mask tacked on to that. So after a penalty, that's kind of a, a shaky start actually with some penalties on both teams to start the quarter. First and 17, Burwell gets 10. Tack on another 15 for a personal foul against the Bruins. Anthony Jones with the reception, 13 yards, and now you've got the ball at the UCLA 39. Good pass protection here, and Danny's able to find Anthony on the curl route, and he takes it forward for a, a good game. This is a pretty good drive uh, starting out the third quarter. Trap play up the middle to uh, Shedrick, bulls forward for about six yards. Third down and five. Big play right there, a similar play that I mentioned in the second quarter. Uh, we were unable to, and, and a little high snap again, and Tommy pulls this one wide left by about a yard and a half. Not by very much, a 52-yard attempt. So UCLA with the football, almost fumbled snap. Kevin Williams, and now you can see what Kevin Williams can do. He's a big, strong running back. This is a, a big play for UCLA and, and a breakdown on our part. We had him uh, pinned up at the point of attack. He bent the thing back and broke some tackles, and we gave up valuable field position on this exchange. It's a good point because you had enjoyed that most of the afternoon. Late third quarter, Oregon leading six to nothing. It's a third down and four play. Great effort by Ronnie Harris here to get the first down. Kept his legs going, and uh, I thought that might light us up because it got the fans going. Uh, nice effort here by Ronnie Harris, not only hanging on to the ball, but just keeping his feet going, hanging on. See him trying to rip the ball out, and he's got both hands on it and got those legs churning and moved the pile about eight or nine yards. So the next play we see is a second down and 10. Ricky Whittle takes it up in there for a nice gain. Third down and two as we come to the end of the third quarter. Ricky Whittle gets enough for the first down, and so the Ducks moving the football as we conclude the third period of play. We are ready for the fourth and decisive quarter in this game. Oregon leading it six to nothing, having dominated play so far, but we still have the final 15 minutes. A, a big third down and one play here, a decision to punt the football, and this was a, a key play, I thought. No question, we could have elected to go for it had we not made it. UCLA would have had great field position. If we execute this play, we can, we could have, and could have caught the ball, but we certainly can't stand in the end zone to down the punt. Uh, we obviously didn't coach that well enough because uh, our players were just standing around and handled the ball and watched it, a fine punt that 
bounced on the five or the five yards into the end zone when we had three or four people around there who could have downed it. Nice play here by Romeo Bandison. Tackle for a loss. Good penetration again from the inside. Romeo comes through and makes the tackle for a loss. After a five-yard penalty against the Bruins for delay of game, third and 19, and this is the one you alluded to, Coach. This is a big play right here. Missed the tackle right there, and Kevin Williams picks up the first down. Just a critical, critical play. Uh, should not give that uh, long of a run up on third and long. That play really seemed to uh, ignite UCLA. You could see their players just have a little more sense of energy about them. Again, here comes Williams. Cut back, uh, just got somebody uh, upfield rushing the passer too hard, not playing uh, the run as well as we should, and Kevin was able to break that back. And here, uh, Stokes goes deep on Herman O'Berry, who had injured his knee in the first half, but was able to play, but obviously wasn't 100%. You can see Tony Coker jumping in there to block the punt, or field goal, I should say, extra point, and Again, that's one that you can pick up and run back. It is. Coker does a good job leaping up here, gets his hand up. You can see the, the right hand blocks it. Castle's trying to come over and scoop it. We can run this in the other way and get two points, but we can't get a handle on it. We cannot find the handle. That was the story of the day. So six to six. And then this is a great drive you have, Coach, coming right back. Nice job by Kristen McLemore there. Gain of 38. Third down conversion. Uh, we find him on the slant, slant route. O'Neill delivers it. Gets nice catch and hangs on. You can tell he's protecting the football. Young redshirt freshman receiver's got both hands on it. Instead of trying to run there, he probably should have tried to just use his speed and break away, but he certainly didn't want to give the football back after getting the first down. Now. You're in field goal range already. You've got the ball after this run at the 27. And you, you really milk the clock here for the next uh, four minutes. You do a good job kind of containing uh, UCLA and running the ball at them a little bit, moving them off the ball. Not big chunks, but big enough uh, to keep the chains moving. That was a first down run. This is a second and nine. Shedrick gets four. Third and five, and at the time, this looked like this was a, a huge play in your favor because O'Neill throws the incompletion, but uh, UCLA ruled for roughing the passer. So it gives you a first down. We get a major break right here. Uh, first and goal on the five yard line. Burwell takes this outside and gets to the two. Uh, unfortunately, on the next play, with Whittle in the game, he's supposed to run the play in the same area, and he takes it back inside. We have a hole outside, which you can see from the uh, end zone film, and no gain. Now we try a naked boot here. O'Neill slips, gets the ball away. Ball's knocked away from Herman, or uh, excuse me, O.B. Babs, and we're forced uh, to kick a field goal. Tommy uh, got his foot planted a little too close to the ball and came around uh, around the ball, never got under it, and uh, just hit a spiral out of there and just missed it. Those things happen. So there's 3.13 to play. I believe you only had one timeout left. UCLA had a couple, and uh, Stokes gives them a first down, gets out of bounds, gain of 13. And UCLA's athletic ability shows there with Stokes making a great move, uh, a little sloppy tackling on our part. That was a third and one. They pick up the first down. This is now a second down and five. Cut back play, which they hurt us with uh, on the previous drive by Kevin Williams. First and ten. This is one that, I mean, how does he get it? You wonder. It's uh, one of those plays that uh, could have stopped the drive. If we scoop it, maybe we're going the other way. But uh, they get the play, keep the drive alive. Uh, nice catch again by Stokes. And now you see with two seconds left, uh, they did a good job of delaying on the snap so you couldn't get the same kind of a rush that you had on the block to extra point. And Perez bangs it through. UCLA celebrates. Oregon suffers a, a heartbreaking loss as UCLA wins it the final score, 9-6. to six. Let's take a look at the statistics, and they'll show you that Oregon did everything but to win on the scoreboard as rushing, 154 to only 86 for UCLA total yardage. And I think I added this up correctly. 
UCLA had only 85 yards of total offense until their final three possessions of the football game. Let's flip the page and take a look at turnovers. Unbelievable, none for either team. Penalties, punting, both punters did a good job on the afternoon. Third down conversions, UCLA only 3 of 14, Oregon at 33%. Individual statistics, let's first of all take a look at the rushing. Your two tailbacks combined for 149 yards rushing. Kevin Williams coming off the bench, replacing Chris Alexander, 17 for 95 yards. He was big coming down the stretch. Danny O'Neill, 9 of 19, 119 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Barnes off the bench for UCLA, 11 of 21, 156 yards, and the only touchdown of the afternoon. And defensively, Chad Cota leading the way with nine tackles, two of those four losses, including a sack. And Romeo Bandison, eight tackles, two for losses. He blocked a field goal and uh, pretty much created havoc all afternoon in the middle. Well, after the game, we went into the locker room and talked to the uh, disappointed uh, team members, including uh, Tommy Thompson, who was uh, very, as you might expect, distraught with what happened. I feel really bad. It's just, I don't know, you know, I try to do as much as I can for this team to win. When it comes down to, you know, a position like that, uh, I really like to be out there and to finally get out there and do it and miss, you know, I feel terrible. Going to that 19-yard field goal is just like an extra point. It really wasn't, you know, that bad of an angle, really. Um, just something I just got to forget about. It's not his fault. I mean, Tommy's had a great season. He's had a great year. He's very reliable. He's the one that put us in the position in the first place to be ahead, you know. But, um, you know, when you're on the first and, first and goal on the five or first, you know, whatever we were, you know, you got to put it in. It's like nothing could, could go right for us today. Um, you know, with Tommy, you know, I'm kicking that field goal, you know, we're well, missing it. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, the, the offense building up momentum, you know, all the way down the field, you know, and then that happens. And then, uh, you know, the defense comes out on the field, gets pumped up, and uh, we just couldn't, you know, we couldn't hold them. It's a tough loss. I think they're gonna, it's going to be a physical game, just like it was last year. Um, you know, it's a unique offense. You don't see it uh, that often. We're going to have to be ready for that. And uh, I think it's going to be a physical game. Um, you know, Civil War, it doesn't matter what the records are. It's always a, it's always a big game for both teams, and I think both teams are always up for it. So we just got to regroup and, uh, you know, be ready to play like we can. Uh, you know, I don't think we played uh, up to our abilities today. As far as Oregon State goes, um, I didn't even get a chance to play against them last year, so I'm really excited to play against uh, the Beavers next uh, next week. But um, it's like I know they're going to try and knock us off, just like UCLA did. So we got to be re ready for them. We were just sliding down last year, and you know I don't even know if if a lot of people really you know that game wasn't high on our list last year, and uh, you know is it this year? This year, you know that's all we got left. All right, let's talk about. Oregon State coming up next. You mentioned last year's game. Let's talk about this year's Oregon State team. Uh, a team that uh, has one victory, one tie. The tie came against Arizona. Uh, they've played some people much tougher this year. This is a much better football team, it appears, than it was a year ago. Well, I don't think there's any question Oregon State's team this year is uh, vastly improved over uh, the addition in, in Jerry's first year. Uh, certainly, uh, they are doing more big things. Here's an example of big play ability. Uh, uh, Dwayne Owens taking a kickoff, uh, what, 96 yards uh, for a touchdown uh, against uh, UCLA. Uh, they also were able to move the football on the offensive side and score against UCLA, something we couldn't do. Uh, they, they have just uh, become a more consistent team. They, uh, everything that uh, you see after every game, every coach remarks about how hard Oregon State plays. And they, regardless of the score, uh, they have got their players playing at a very high level of enthusiasm and emotion. And they just play the game like they really enjoy the game of football. Uh, their offense is unique, obviously. It's uh, difficult to prepare for in one week. Uh, they've started to throw the ball a little bit more. Uh, off of the option attack, which even adds a little bit further confusion as to your defensive preparation. Uh, defensively, they just swarm to the ball. Uh, as you can see here, they, they really do an excellent job of, of flying to the football, creating turnovers. Uh, it's, a, it's a much, much improved football team. Yeah, despite their loss to the Washington Huskies uh, this past weekend, 
their recent performances would indicate that they are they've made giant strides they almost knocked off Stanford in fact if they complete a, a pass in that game late in the game they beat Stanford UCLA they had them on the ropes leading I believe it was 14-13 uh, uh, in the third quarter of that contest what is it about uh, Oregon State's uh, offense that, that's improved? Is it just that one more year of the system for them? Is it the development of Mark Olford? Or what do you see? Well, I think so. And I might add the Arizona State game, Todd. Uh, going into the fourth quarter, they were in position to win that football game. And I thought I was watching that on television, and I thought they were going to win it. Uh, and then just uh, some turnovers and some breakdowns. Uh, I, I believe that uh, any time you in install that type of an offense, it takes a while for the, uh, the quarterback and the skill people to understand uh, the system, so to speak, uh, uh, to get the reads, to, get the, to have the patience to stay with it. Uh, uh, and, and they have improved, uh, I think, dramatically in that regard. Their offensive line comes off very well. They, uh, they block you low. They come in and get you at the knees, which is, is something that you're not used to because most uh, everybody else is up pushing and shoving, and they're down scramble blocking. Uh, they just do a great job and they hit you f with a lot of different angles. Uh, we, we would just like to win this game. I'd like our seniors to go out with a winning season. That's in grasp and uh, for us to do that we have to beat Oregon State. It's going to be a very difficult game, particularly up there. They've played extremely well mm -hmm. at home. Indeed they have. They've struggled a little bit on the road, but at home they've been very tough just to let the record speak for itself. So it'll be interesting. Civil War in Corvallis. We hope to see you at the ball game. If not, we'll see you right back here for our final coaches show. And good luck to the Oregon seniors playing in their final game in the green and white and yellow. Good luck to all of you. And thank you very much for watching this afternoon. Thanks to our audience. We'll see you next week. The Oregon Sports Network presents The Rich Brooks Show.